Okay, we are back live here inside the hang space of VMware, VMworld 2012. VMware 2012, it's getting late in the, early in the day, Dave, so. <laughs> it's only day two, John. <laughs> we are marathon coverage, wall-to-wall -wall coverage of siliconangle.com's exclusive and continuous coverage, three days of wall-to-wall -wall VMware, VMworld 2012 coverage. I'm John Furrier, the founder of siliconangle.com, and I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of wikibon.org, and we're here with Cynthia Stoddard, who's the CIO of NetApp. Cynthia, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, thank you, happy to, see, to be we, here. We first met in June, you were relatively new to NetApp at that time, we were at an analyst event, and right. you were talking uh, to a number of us, and we had a great conversation, and I uh, wonder if we could explore some of those things here, but first of all, we're here at, at VMworld, what do you think? I think it's great, it's just a wonderful place to be. Virtualization is you know, a real building block future for IT, so seeing all the excitement, all the products, Wonderful. NetApp won the demo. That was big, big news, right? Dave That's hits, great. You know, Dave the, is you wonderful. Know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's great. <laughs> he definitely helps the ballot box. And um, yeah, so tell us a little bit about you know, NetApp's IT operations and you know where you're, where you're, what you're doing and where you're taking it. Yeah, um, operations, uh, IT operations. The IT organization at NetApp, I view, as being very strategic. Um, you know, we look a lot to add value to the organization, and one of the key ways that an organization can do that is really to position themselves to be agile. And you hear a lot about agile these days, and you know, I think it's a word that can be used in a lot of different uh, ways, different elements. And you, know, you hear about agile development, which we've been doing. I mean, we looked at our Salesforce implementation, and we did that in um, an agile format. So we had scrum teams and all this other stuff. But the important thing to consider when you look at um, an agile organization is it's only, it only can be as agile as your weakest link. So if you have infrastructure that is extremely rigid, you're, you're going to sub-optimize your processes. If you set up your infrastructure in an agile format so that you know, it can expand, contract, you have the efficiencies, then you're going to enable your development organization, you're going to enable your business users to do things a lot quicker, which means you're delivering that value to the business quicker and you can respond to market demands in a better manner. So it's like a caravan going down the road, the slowest truck is Absolutely. This is what, what slows the whole convoy down. Right, so if you think about it, um, you, know, you have these wonderful scrum teams, they're doing all this work, but if you can't spin up an environment in a quick enough manner, they're going to stall and have to wait. Or if you need to you know, do some testing in a special manner and you need some special you know, um, equipment or something or virtualized environment and you can't do it, you have to wait a traditional way to do it, it's going to slow things down. So the quicker that you can enable your infrastructure to, to handle those sorts of situations, uh, you're going to enable the whole organization to deliver the value quicker. So how do you deal with that? So, I mean, you don't get free infrastructure, right? Even though you're an infrastructure company, it does, you know, you've still got, you've got a capital budget and you have to deal with that. Um, so how do you, you know, resolve that? How do you go from point A to point B without ripping and replacing your, your old stuff? Well, you're, you're absolutely right. We don't get free infrastructure. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we have budgets and everything just like um, all the other IT organizations. You know, we make use of our products um, very extensively. We've um, actually have in implemented what we call uh, a program, NetApp on NetApp, which really highlights the use of our products internally. And also another program that we call uh, Customer One, where we are the first user of our products internally. So they kind of work hand in hand. One is really to demonstrate the long-term use of our product, and the other one is to be that first user of the product. On the long-term use, we, um, we use the products you know, in order to make quick replicas of our environments. So if you think about, or I can give you a few examples of what we've done is you know, an environment that, if you look at our uh, business intelligence environment, you know, it, we needed really to have a series of about eight different environments in order to, to really do the work at the pace that we needed to support the business. Using our technology, we were able to really have two physical environments and then up to 24 virtual environments. So, you know, we already originally had a goal to say, hey, eight, you know, would suffice, but when we started to expand and use our own technology and adjust our processes, we found that we could really expand and support the business that much quicker. 
So there's a lot of benefits that come out from looking at your infrastructure and making sure that it is agile and can support your development. So you guys, uh, we, the industry, we talk about big data all the time, and it sounds like you guys are big data practitioners. We talked in June about what you're doing with, with data analytics. Why don't you share with our audience you know, some of the things that you're, you're doing, and we'll get into it a little bit. Sure. Um, we, have, we, we are uh, doing a lot with big data. Actually, we have a uh, implementation that we've been doing with, uh, with our own technology, um, the E2600 in, in Hadoop. And what we have is we have a tremendous amount of data that is generated by, you know, by, our, um, by our product. And in this data that comes in on, on, a, on a cycle, it tells us alerts, it tells us different statistics about what is actually going on within the NetApp environments. It's called our auto support. Um, you, know, you can call it a, a home phone feature, but it's actually much richer with the statistics and the information that it passes back to us. It's much richer than a home phone. So um, what we do is all this information comes back in. You know, if the customer has it turned on, it comes back in. It's all metadata. Right? It's, it's all metadata, yeah, no it comes back data. in. Um, populates a Hadoop uh, data structure, and then we can use it to create analytics, um, predictive analytics, so we can look at different types of trends and, and issues that might be going on, or different ways that people are using some of the features of our product, and be able to package that up, package that up internally for use so that we can better support our customers. And then also we have the ability to package it up for the customers so they can understand you know, what systems they might have at risk, where they can make better use of some of our techniques and tools um, and features, and where you know, they might not be as storage efficient as they could be in certain areas. And this is all packaged up, and you can take our, our big data concept and take it all the way to mobility, because it's all packaged up and it's used internally on our website, and we even have mobile applications where you as a customer can look at you know, my ASAP, my auto support, and get those, that information right at your fingertips. Okay, so you're not just shipping PowerPoints and Excel spreadsheets no. to, to people, and, and your partners can take advantage of this as well? The partners, yes, absolutely. So you've set up a portal, we have a portal, well, you can protected. actually um, download the, uh, the uh, mobile app, uh, yes. When did you go live with this? When did we go live? Um, maybe about six months ago. So, talk six about months ago on, the, um, you know, on some of the mobile app, but the yeah. Hadoop journey um, has been iterative. So, you know, again, employing some of the agile techniques. Mm -hmm. We actually started that maybe about nine months ago, and we've had about three releases this so year. So how has it affected the business? Um, you know, your customers' businesses or your partners' businesses? What are, what are some of the learnings and impacts that you could share with us? Well, the, the impact is, um, I think, is huge. If you can think about, you know, before you had to analyze a subset of information because perhaps you didn't have the processing power to, to analyze the whole population, whereas now we're capturing much more and we can take that whole population and analyze it, your result is going to be that much richer. So you're not constraining your result by the size of what you're analyzing. Yeah, so um, I have to ask you, do you virtualize the Hadoop application? Do you know? Um, portions of it, yes, you do. Are okay, so I, yeah. I saw VMware yeah. uh, putting a big emphasis on bringing that Hadoop yes. silo into the virtual yes. platform. Um, there's always some concern about doing that with yes. analytics, you know? Yes. And, uh, yeah. Some of the application heads don't want to do that, so as a practitioner. Well, you know, that's an that. interesting that's an interesting point that you make about application heads not wanting to uh, not wanting to do that because there's um, I think there's a little bit of a of a fear that if you mix different types of workloads, that your particular workload that you're responsible for may suffer. So I think that you know that's part of the education process that both infrastructure people and you know the education that happens at conferences like this where that people can get comfortable that you can coexist in a virtualized environment. Yeah, that not in my backyard syndrome. That's you know, right, that's right. It's, it, that's right, that's right. You, you can do it, but <laughs> not me. So how aggressively are you? I mean, I, NetApp's bet the farm on virtualization generally and, and VMware specifically. I mean, how, how aggressive are you virtualizing your applications? We, we are very aggressively virtualizing our applications overall um, as an organization. We're um, about, I would say 70% rough numbers virtualized. If you look at um, our dev test, 
versus our production environment. Our dev test is actually virtualized um, more than the production. And the reason for that is, is we have actually um, built a new data center up in Hillsborough, Oregon. And we're going to be taking our production applications from our two data centers in California, moving them up to Oregon. We will expand our production virtualization footprint while we do that. Actually, we've called our um, Oregon data center the home of the agile data infrastructure. So we'll be deploying our cluster mode and FlexPod and ensuring that whatever we put into that data center is built to a certain set of standards. We're actually also viewing it um, as kind of a blueprint and a case study so that when we work with our customers to move to cluster mode in an agile data infrastructure, we can take them through the learnings and the practices that, that we have encountered as we move our production applications up to Oregon. I wonder if I could ask you about the CIO's role. It's always an interesting topic uh, that I'd like to discuss uh, with. So in particular, where are we today? Where do we come from? Obviously, the, the, the lead technology officer is not typically a geek, you know? I mean, and I mean that in a good way to all you geeks out there. <laughs> um, but seriously, you, you know, I mean, maybe you've got uh, some folks with you know, programming backgrounds, but generally speaking, your, your CIO today is a business person. That's right. um, and that's not always been the case, but I guess in the last five, 10 years, that is the case. Where do you see that role today and where do you see it going? Yeah, I, um, I think that the CI role today is very much business focused. And I would expand the business focus to say that the business focus is really to um, enable the internal business to operate efficiently, you know, with really the goal of make, driving those efficiencies to the external customer. Also, when you look at the external role, making sure that you, you know, that you understand what the customer pain is so that you can structure your processes and your products and everything to fit that, that external um, need. So I see it really as um, a CI role today is really in three different components. You know, the first is you know, meeting the needs of the business and being that business person, bringing solutions to the table and saying, okay, you know, here are ways that you can apply technology or change what you're doing on the business process side. You know, also being an advocate for the external customer, whatever business that you're in, whether you're in you know, high tech as we are and being the advocate for customers using NetApp product, but if you're in retail, actually being the advocate for those customers, either using your website you know, or shopping in your stores or whatever. The third component is really being that internal visionary and leader to the IT organization. So really splitting it into those three components. Because the IT organization needs that leader and vision of where is the, where's the roadmap, where are we going, how do we support the business. The business needs the CIO to really be that partner and bring ideas to the table. And then the external world really needs the CIO to be an advocate for them. So the technology fits. And as a CIO and a technology uh, company, You've got another role. You got demands on your time. I mean, there's a sales force calling you, saying, "Hey, can you, they do. They can you do. come and go on a call with me?" And we and have a great sales some force. <laughs> points, and so that pulls your time. I, I suppose I don't know. I guess the CIO of FedEx probably goes and visits a lot of customers too. But but is it different in a, in the role of a technology company, a technology-driven business where you're selling technology? Is it is it more demand on your time? And how do you manage? You all know, that? I. Um, yeah, I came out of the logistics business, so actually you talk about the CIO of FedEx calling on customers, yeah, he probably would. Um, actually, I did mm -hmm. when uh, I was in my old role. And I would say that from that perspective, it's, um, it's similar. Um, I think there's a slight difference, and I would say that you know, in, the, you know, in the logistics world, you're, you're really crafting solutions for the supply chain, where in the, in the technology world, you're really sharing best practices and how you use the product, right? And you're sharing best practices and other components of IT. You know, you might have a, a conversation about big data, but you also might have a conversation about how are you rolling out, you know, agile infrastructure, or how do you set up an enterprise architecture group where it has credibility in the right. organization. So you get into a lot of different topics being in a technology company that are really just top of mind and best practice. And more of a, a catalyst in some cases as well for That's right. knowledge transfer. Exactly. All right. Cynthia Stoddard, thank you very much for coming inside the Cube. Great story, steady hand at the helm of uh, NetApp's uh, technology business. Really appreciate you thank coming you. on. Thank you, it's great Good to, to see, see you it. again. All right, keep it right there, we'll be right back. This is the Cube, siliconangle.tv's continuous coverage of VMworld 2012 from San Francisco. We'll be right back.